Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We didn't get a lot, if any, sunshine today, but those 40s felt pretty good. And we'll be thinking about this quiet weather once tomorrow hits. Winter is returning, and some of us will be dealing with it more than others. Let's find out from Hutch what we can expect this evening in no wait weather. Hutch? Right now, across the valley, we have clouds, and there is not going to be a lot of changes in the conditions that we have around here this evening. Those changes will take place by daybreak for many, though. Take a look at what's going on in northeast Montana. Snow and down to the south where it's warm enough. We have showers of rain pushing their way off to the east. Here is a look at a winter weather advisory that's posted for the northern tier of counties. Uh, this is in effect from the wee hours of tomorrow morning throughout the day tomorrow for wintry weather to produce some significant snowfall that could impact travel up north. I want to let you know it's going to snow in a lot wider area than just those few counties, as a matter of fact. So temperatures now in the mid 30s to around 40 degrees. Enjoy a while while you can. Your planner for the FM area looks like this. Temperatures will be dropping into the mid 30s. It will be cloudy. Isolated locations could get some of the drizzle, some low clouds. The best chance of that will be northwest Minnesota. I'll have hour by hour details on when the snowflakes start falling in your neighborhood, who sees snow, and how much you can expect here in just a few mo moments in your full weather forecast. All right. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. Now on to some breaking news. The Cass County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help in finding a runaway boy. This boy, deputies say George Lee Eugene Locke, was last seen Sunday morning in rural Harwood. He's wearing a white sweatshirt with yellow and red lettering along with black and white LeBron James basketball shoes. If you know where he is, you're asked to call Sergeant Gabrielson at this phone number, 241-5842. More breaking news this evening. Three people have been taken to the hospital and a driver will likely be cited following a crash near the Moorhead-Dilworth border. It happened around 3.15 this afternoon at the corner of Highway 10 and 34th Street. The Dilworth police chief tells us a car was heading west on Highway 10 when they didn't stop for a red light and crashed into a car heading south on 34th Street. Both drivers involved, along with a passenger, were injured in that accident. The Dilworth police chief tells us the driver of the car that caused the crash will eventually be cited, most likely for something related to reckless driving. We're learning more information about a 21-year-old man who police believe is connected to the Royal Liquors robbery and several other robberies in the area. Police believe 21-year-old Bilal Shahid robbed the liquor store with a handgun in early September. Investigators say Shahid posted on Snapchat and Instagram bragging about his robbery. Court documents say Shahid is also tied to a robbery of that same liquor store back in 2018 and a Moorhead drug robbery back in February. There were several warrants out for his arrest. A man who walked away from Center Inc. over the weekend is now back in custody. Juan Martinez was arrested in North Fargo around 1.45 this morning. He was seen being picked up in a car which was later stopped by Fargo officers. Martinez walked away from Center Inc. on Sunday where he was serving time for a 2015 charge of felon in possession of a weapon. The investigation is now ongoing to determine what additional charges will be filed. The Bemidji Police Department wants to warn you about a high-risk sex offender who is moving to the area. Officials say 42-year-old Gerald Joseph Brown Eagle is scheduled to be released on November 20th and will be moving into the 600 block of 4th Street Northwest in Bemidji. He is described as 6'1", 344 pounds, with brown eyes, black hair. Police say Brown Eagle has a history of sexual contact with women of all ages. High-risk offenders are considered the most likely to reoffend. A 45-year-old man is now behind bars after police say he led them on a high-speed chase in Grand Forks. Officials say it happened this morning when police pulled Robert Fowley Jr. over near UND. According to police, he took off and speeds reached 95 miles per hour before Fowley crashed into another car. That's when police say he tried to run away on foot. Fowley's in jail for several charges, including reckless endangerment, drug possession, and driving under suspension. No one was injured during this incident. A North Fargo grocery store is urging the city to shut down plans for a new bar and restaurant in their part of town. 701 Brew is being proposed for the old Rosie's Laundromat at 701 University Drive North. But currently the plans only show nine parking spaces. And Family Fair Grocery Store says that's not enough, adding the restaurant's patrons will end up using their lot. 
Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with those in the neighborhood today who say this restaurant would be a good change. What I want to see is, is life happening here instead of the decay. It's a neighborhood some say is the forgotten part of town. So when the rumors hit about what could soon stand here instead, Patty McLaughlin says she was excited. The more I sat with it, the more I thought maybe this is a really good opportunity for our area and for downtown Fargo. McLaughlin says she thinks the two-story bar and restaurant plans are just the kind of revamp her neighborhood needs to finally feel safer and more walkable. I think that it will create a safe place for us. We have had a lot of drug issues on this block, a lot of violence, domestic violence. We have slumlords. Um, we have activity that shouldn't be in this block or anybody's block. But Family Fair just down the street isn't so keen on the potential new neighbor. In a letter to the city, the store's attorney says the, quote, inadequate parking will result in the restaurant's customers parking in Family Fair's lot. The letter goes on to say they've already dealt with these problems with Fargo Brewing Company's patrons, saying it's impacted the grocery store's deliveries and customers and forced them to start patrolling their lot even claiming they found piles of nails and screws in their entrances. Retaliation, they believe, came from the brewery's customers for not being able to park in the store's lot anymore. However, Fargo Brewing adamantly denies these claims. But with only nine spots in the proposed restaurant's plans, the smoke shop across the street says they're fine with people parking in their lot, and McLaughlin says there's plenty of room on her street. We've always had people parking on our blocks. Frankly, I prefer to have people going to a restaurant parking out in front of here than people who are doing who are exchanging drugs. In North Fargo, Baby Hurley, Valley News Live. We reached out to Fargo City Commissioner Dave Pepcorn, who says he thinks the new restaurant will be a great addition to North Fargo and says he isn't worried about parking problems. Another day, another scam. This one is tricking you into thinking you have jury duty. A caller claiming to be with the Ottertail County Sheriff's Department says you can get out of jury duty if you pay a fee. But that's not true. Authorities remind you to never give out money or your personal information over the phone without verifying the identity of the caller. U.S. Representative Ilhan Omar of Minnesota is asking the judge sentencing the man who threatened to kill her to show compassion. Officials say Patrick Carlinio pleaded guilty to threatening to kill Omar in U.S. District Court in Rochester Monday. His charges carry up to 10 years in prison and his sentencing is set for February. Carlinio reportedly called Omar's office in March and threatened to shoot her. He also called Omar a terrorist. The second impeachment hearing of the day has just concluded in the House Intelligence Committee. Earlier, administration aides who listened to the July 25th phone call between President Trump and the leader of Ukraine told lawmakers they were concerned about that call. Nicole Killian has more from Capitol Hill. Please rise. Former U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine Kurt Volker told lawmakers he would have expressed objections had he been aware of the push to get Ukraine to investigate the Bidens. At no time was I aware of or knowingly took part in an effort to urge Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Biden. Volker was joined by former National Security Council official Tim Morrison. He was on the July 25th phone call between President Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. I feared at the time of the call on July 25th how its disclosure would play in Washington's political climate. My fears have been realized. In an earlier hearing, Vice Presidential aide Jennifer Williams and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman of the National Security Council expressed concerns about the call. I found the July 25th phone call unusual. It was inappropriate. At times, Republicans tried to discredit Vindman and pressed him to out the whistleblower who triggered the impeachment inquiry. Colonel, you never leaked information? I never did, never would. That is, uh, that is preposterous that I would do that. Vindman said he doesn't know who the whistleblower is. You're not willing to tell us who that other individual is. This committee will not be used to out the whistleblower. Democrats accused Republicans of attacking the decorated Army veteran. It's what you stoop to when the indefensibility of your case requires that you attack a man who is wearing a Springfield rifle on a field of blue above a purple heart. I understand now he wears his uniform when he goes in. No, I don't know Vindman. President Trump said he watched some of the hearing. He called the proceedings a kangaroo court and a big scam. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill.
Witnesses scheduled for Wednesday's public testimony are Ambassador to the European Union Gordon Sondland, defense official Laura Cooper, and the State Department's third-ranking official David Hale. Don't forget to join us for the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show on Saturday at 1. We will take you right up to kickoff at 2 on the KVLY and KFYR Bison Football Network.